What's up, guys? Doing well. I'll uh, try to help you any way I can. Greg, you, uh, obviously the program, you've been doing this long enough, so you probably have history with almost anything, but you, you, uh, Rutgers did lose to New Hampshire at one point, Villanova at one point. Do you bring those up? And not only those, but then obviously even this season, Montana over Washington, East Tennessee State over Vanderbilt, Jacksonville State over Florida State. There is some history with, of FCS teams beating FBS teams. Well, there is. And as you mentioned, I appreciate you making me go back to that. Uh, but um, yeah, Sarge, there, there's been eight FCS teams that beat FBS teams in the last nine days, now make it 10, right? So you're foolish if you even think that way, quite honestly. I told it. We don't need to talk about it. If you watched college football, which our guys do, it's very clear. And, you know, Delaware, they were one of the best two teams in the whole country last year. That's why they played in that game. And as you watch them, they're a good football team. And they have good players on offense, good players on defense, and good players in the kicking game. So uh, to me, just like it was for Temple and for Syracuse, it's about Rutgers getting ready, our team getting ready to be the best that we can be. And we certainly weren't on Saturday. Um, you know, you never are, right? But we weren't close to be playing our best football, and we need, to, we need to get a lot closer to it than we were. So that's our goal. Um, but we understand exactly what Delaware is. They're a very good football team. What's been the key for the defense has played these first two games? Well, I think they're doing their job. You know, uh, we, we have a saying, do your job. And, and what that means is when you do your job, the plays come to you. When you try to go make plays, generally you leave the confines of your job and you try to do something special, and that's where we get in trouble. When you prepare for Delaware, do you treat them like a team that's playing their 10th game almost in a season? Or do you <laughs> treat it like you have all this film on them? Or do you think that helps the FCS schools that they have played so much recently compared to you guys? It's that's a great that's a great question, and I don't think a lot of people think of that. But I think that's really, and I don't know the answer, right? Because there's that gap in between. Yet we're looking at the film as kind of continuous film, and it's weird, right? Because guys change numbers from the spring season to the fall. So I hear that's the old number that you know, but essentially the same football team, and like I said, they had great success in the spring, and now they're two and zero in the fall. So when you look at the run that they've been on, it's a heck of a run, even though it's split up by a couple of months, summer. But it's uh, you try to make, you try to see what did they change during the summer? Was there any kind of? And then are we going to see something different? One of the things that they play a similar structure defense that Syracuse played. They're different on how they do things, but at least the base structure is that three. Three three uh, or three, you know, the three five three look that that uh, that we saw last week. Can you update us on Gavin's eligibility status, and is it possible that he can play this Saturday? Gavin is eligible to do everything now. He's eligible to practice in full pads. He's eligible to dress for the games and everything. So he's an eligible player um, by NCAA rules. Possible that he can play on Saturday. Well, he's eligible, so everybody who's eligible is possible to play. Sure the transition because it's such a unique situation well I think we're still in the middle of it Bobby I mean he's only been here for less than a week right so um, or no just over a week but um, I think he's doing a good job of just finding his way you know get his books get to class he's been to some classes he's kind of living college life now but you can imagine it's like drinking out of a fire hose right one minute you're you're playing in a high school football game and the next minute you're sitting in a college class so uh, we're just kind of helping them along. And I think the guys, really, the players have done a great job accepting them and helping them learn the, learn the ropes. Change your recruiting approach? I mean, with so many players enrolling early, is that part of the pitch now? Do you have to kind of adjust it every year? Well, there's only been two of them in the history of college football, right? So, yeah, going forward, we got to think. The early, the mid-year admission is almost the norm. Like I told you, our class, 16, we were two-thirds January start and one third June start. So that's already kind of transformed. The question is, will this become, you know, when everybody started going in January a while back, that was like, oh, you can't believe it. 
well now is everyone's that way right now a little bit with kids passing up their senior year but is that going to become more normal i don't know it's awfully hard to manage your scholarships that way though really hard so i think if you're going to do it it's going to have to be you know we were fortunate that we had one available to do it with um, but that's going to have to really be factored into your roster management now and I think it's going to have to be probably a little bit earlier in the process, knowing what young people want to do. Was played, you know, especially the other day against Syracuse. I mean, where do you feel like the biggest improvement that you guys want to make going into this Delaware game now? You know, I don't think we're far off. Um, we we are one or two guys away, and I've always heard coaches say that, right? That's a famous saying by coaches. We're one or two guys away. Yeah, well, no kidding. And they're one or two guys are making the play too, uh, but. I don't think we're as far off. The area where we have to really, I think, get better is third down. You know, we're not we're not converting on third down. Now, part of that is, are we putting ourselves in good third down situations? But I actually think, for the most part, we have. Yeah, we've had a couple of third and longs, but we've been in the we've been in kind of the wheelhouse we'd like to be, but we have to convert them more consistently. And I screwed one of them up. We should have went for the fourth down and one. We were messing around. With playing six, seven, eight offensive linemen, is that almost a necessity thing now? I mean, or would you prefer to not have to mix and match like that? You know, I used to say I want that, you know, the old thing, five and make a fist and that fire or tough and all the coach speak stuff. But there is there is truth to that. But also in this day of the transfer portal, and I, I think the more guys you can play, the better. Um, and I guess if they're equally – adept at the position, they're going to be fresher too. Not only fresher within that game, but fresher when you get to November and December. So, you know, I guess we're figuring it out. Andy, Coach Oreck, is comfortable doing that. A lot of that comes down to your line coach. He's comfortable doing that, which makes me more comfortable doing it. I made a big point about uh, the need to be more vertical in the passing game this season. You talked about it on the Big Ten Network. Um, and so th through the first two weeks, haven't really seen a whole bunch of it. Uh, where do you pinpoint the uh, biggest issue on that? Is it um, offensive line? Is it Noah? Is it you know wide receiver separation? Where do, you, where, do you, where do you think is the biggest reason for the lack of it? All of the above. And the one that you left out was defensive scheme. You know, if you're throwing a nine route to the wide out and they roll up on a corner and have a half defender over the top, well, you can throw it, but it might get picked, right? So you look to do that versus single coverage and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one battle. We've had a couple of one-on-one -on -one battles and haven't come up with the ball, though. So is that the throw? Is that the catch? You know, everyone's its own situation. And then we've had some where it's called and we didn't have an opportunity to get the ball off because of the protection. But you're right. You know, I'm a big believer in those, I call them flyover yards. When you go throw a deep ball, you fly over a lot of problems, right? A lot of missed blocks, a lot of potential penalties, a lot of bad things, you go right over it. Zoom. So that's that's one thing that we, we do have to do a better job in for sure. I think last year we asked you about penalties and you said that you never want to be up high, but you never want to be right up to the top of the nation. You're there now. Is that okay? Are you okay with that? Are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I mean, my thing when I say that is I don't want guys – like I want guys playing through the whistle, right? So that means you're going hard. And every once in a while you're going to get a penalty, which is an aggressive penalty. Um, every once in a while you're locked up with a guy you may get a hold. You don't like it, but it may happen. You know, alignment penalties – offside penalties, those, you know, the self-inflicted wound penalties are the ones that I'm talking about. Right now, uh, I certainly like the way we're, we're handling the, you know, abiding by the rules because we're playing really hard. So if we can do that and play really hard, look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be against it. But that's what I mean when I say that. Um, I say about the backfield, um, you know, rotation. Um, just wanted you to expand on it a little bit. Um, are you more in the line of Pacheco is your starter? You, you've already said that uh, definitively, but um, you know Kyle is going to get you know uh, more more touches and Aaron. I mean, are you happy with the distribution one and then two going forward? Do you ever see you know going with a bell cow? Going with a a bell cow, a featured guy. Um, again, Keith, I let that play itself out. If somebody becomes that hot that he he should just stay in there, then that's what'll happen. But um, 
we have good players in the in the running back room, and I want to make sure that all our good players get a chance to play. Hey, any update on how close he is? He's getting better, Bobby. Uh, he's getting better. You know, not not to get into too many details, but he's healing up, and I'm anxious to see him play because I thought he had a really good spring, and you know he didn't have many days of training camp, but the days he had, he did a very nice job as well. Good. Craig, along those lines, uh, stick with the secondary. You know, how have, how would you assess they played so far, and sp specifically Max Mellon? He's he's been around the ball so far this year. Yeah, I think I think overall we've played well. We've given up two two shots, right? Two big plays. Our goal is to give up none. Um, but I think we've played aggressively. We've we've matched up pretty well in man to man coverage so far. A couple of zone opportunities. I thought we had opportunities to take the ball out of the air, and we didn't. Um, so uh, hopefully we get improved at that. But overall, I'd say they're playing well. And as you mentioned, Max is, I think, playing at a high level right now. He's, uh, he's doing a good job. So, guys, I appreciate you coming out. Thanks.